pushing it. So uh, the main thing is to just not die. <laughs> like that. Let's try this again. The main thing in playing this level is to not die, not take so much damage that you die, and to attempt to not hit enough asteroids such that um, he ends up ahead of you. Um, it's not so hard right here, um, but it gets harder as the levels go on. Um, at this point, the power boost can really help you because they can fly you through a whole bunch of asteroids without you actually having to dodge them, um, which is very useful. Uh, they also keep you ahead of him, but it's not like he isn't always just one asteroid crash behind you anyway. Um, the only advantage that you have on these levels, if you're not actually playing for getting all the, uh, all the bubbles, as I'm not, uh, anymore, is that there are a lot of asteroids, and, uh, and, uh, he slows down whenever he gets near an asteroid. So it's a lot easier to push him into asteroids when there are more asteroids to push him into. Psycho. I'm really bad at fighting Psycho, um, and I will explain to you why. Um, so one, um, he has an attack that never misses unless you happen to shoot it out of the air before he hits you, or happen to be running really fast. And if you're running really fast, there's really no way you can fight him, so um, there's no point in running really fast, you just have to take the damage. Two. Um, Shooting him doesn't actually damage him. You have to shoot him and knock him unconscious, and while he's unconscious, you have to whip him. Um, and while he's unconscious, he just sort of floats around randomly, so you can, you can aim, you know, for where he was, but you know, there's no guarantee he'll be there when you, by the time you get there. Um, and uh, that's, you know, if you're even better aiming than I am, you might manage to hit him more, uh, but I'm not particularly good at aiming, so I don't. Uh, the last thing is that... Uh, you will run out of ammunition, probably before you've hit him enough times. And when you run out of ammunition, it is impossible to shoot the, uh, the thing out of his hand before he hits you with it. And then you start to take large amounts of damage, and then you die. The last thing, really annoying thing, is that if, you know, in trying to shoot him, to whip him, you get too close to him, he will simply damage you when he wakes up. Is that it? Yay! It's not as hard on this level. With each successive um, loss, uh, you have to hit him an extra time. Uh, now it's time for level 5, my absolute favorite level in the world. Unfortunately, I'm starting with not a lot of health uh, and not a lot of guns either, so I may be in real trouble here. Okay. So now that I'm relatively safe, nothing is attacking me, I'm going to just stand here and let my gun recharge because I'm going to need the gun. And although there is an, a gun pickup over here, you can see, there it is, um, you, there's a chance that in getting it, okay, uh, let's just start over. <laughs> so much for the strategy for surviving on this level um, without having any guns or health. Because now I have both guns and health, so you'll have to figure that out on your own. It's perfectly worth getting that if you aren't down to 10% health. This can take a while, but it saves bullets, and you really need to save bullets on this level. So this is the strategy for whipping brains. Um, you just stand there to the, the... The brains just simply hop back and forth from one position to the... To, and back to the... Between two positions, they hop. And uh, so you just stand slightly to the left of one of the positions, such that your uh, whip lines up with it perfectly, and then just whip until you happen to catch them as they're hopping. I hate these green brains. Uh, because they move in such a fashion that it's basically very hard to hit them the first time such that they don't uh, immediately drop a bunch of maggots on your head. And then if they do, you immediately take damage. So it's best to simply avoid them if you can. Um, if you can totally ignore one, by all means do so. Unfortunately, there are very few that you can actually just totally ignore. So the reason I went over and did all that was to turn on this escalator, because otherwise you can't get up it. Here's the escalator. There we are. Ah. 
Now it's the point where you have to jump on the electric spears. I'm pretty good at the jumping, but like I said, I'm very bad at aiming the whip, and I'm going to have to whip in between a couple of these spears in a moment here. Plus, if you bump your head, chances are you get hurt. Like so. So over here, there's some extra stuff. Make sure you jump it and get it, because you're about to need it. Um, because you are about to fight the um, light bulb, um, flashy, maybe, you know, monster fetus things in jars. I don't know what they are, but they're about to, a whole bunch of them are about to come flying at you, and you should shoot them. Um, the best way to get past this level is to remember what order things come in, um, and it's not very easy to do. Um, fortunately, you have a little leeway, because if you're firing near the right direction, chances are you'll hit them anyway. You know, if you're firing to the left and they're coming from the upper left, you may hit them anyway. Um, there we go. Quite good. Um, just make sure you don't take so much damage that you're down below 25% at this point. Uh, you're going to get a 75% health boost in a moment, so you'll be back up to 100 as long as you're at least 25. And chances are you're going to need a lot of that 100 on the second wave because it goes for longer, and there's a little extra bit at the end where it can very easily just do another 20% down damage to you without there's anything you can do about it. So. Okay, 30% should be good enough for me to survive. As far as I can tell, the only way to not take any damage here is to fire it down immediately and then to your left. I still got hit once. It's more, there are a lot of these sitting right there. Do not touch them. Whip them, and they will go in. Uh, especially if you're down to like 10% health. Don't touch them or you will immediately die. Now we are at the bottom of the level, which means it's very dangerous here. It's quite easy to just fall off, so make sure you use your helicopter head all the time. Jumping. Uh, and that you always jump as high as you can so that you never take any shock damage. I failed to heed my own advice there and took a little shock damage. Um, just a little word while I'm standing here. Professor Monkey for Head is climbing all around in his lab and he has these little wheels, right? Like so, here. Like so, there. Um, that he turns and they open these interdimensional portals or something, and through them come these eyes, these giant eyes with, with wings on them. Um, and uh, he turns them open, and then he closes them again, and opens them and closes them again. Um, and when you shoot him, he goes away. And if he goes away while it's open, it will continue to let in these floating eyes until it's off the screen. And uh, there's not much you can do about it except just go off the screen yourself. Leave it off the screen. Fortunately, although it looks open, it's not entirely open. It's not doing the thing I was talking about. But one does, you'll know, because there'll just be a whole lot of eyes on the screen. And the eyes can be quite annoying. They are quite easy to kill. They just take one shot. However, ah! they tend to build up, and they always head straight for you, and they can just totally just sit right on top of you. And because all of your weapons have a certain amount of reach, um, you can't actually hit them when they're right on top of you. It is actually impossible to do so. Um, so you have to run away and hit them from a distance. And that can just be a very hard maneuver to manage. Okay, let's get some health here. And uh, this is my favorite part of the game. This is what makes the whole level worth it, if it weren't already worth it, I mean, just from the decor. Oh my god, it's dark! And their eyes, their eyes in the darkness. You shoot the eyes. Okay. And I love the music. Okay, now. This level has a couple of secrets. Well, it has one main secret. You climb up here onto this promontory, whatever it is. If you jump from there, you can land in this light. And from there, you can get over here to this light. From there, you can get up here to this light. 
if you shouldn't, so you've shot this thing, especially if you're at 20% health. And then if you miss, you have to try over again. Okay, here we are at this slide, uh, this slide, up to here. And then there is a secret invisible chain along the top of the uh, level that you can climb along, and there's some cool stuff along it. One of the things you will run into this, where you can drop down and get a couple guns and shoot this guy. And then you head back again. Promontory, jump off into this light, jump from there to this light, to the corner, and back onto the chain. Second pass on the chain. You get an extra guy! Woohoo! Then you go out the exit. As far as I know, there are no secrets on the second one. one is a more vertically designed uh, closet, <laughs> you want to call it. You'll notice that when you kill the eyes, um, I'm not sure whether it's actually... These two red sparks will fall from your gun. Uh, here we go again. Um, and I think maybe they were supposed to fall from the eyes themselves? I don't know. The eyes were just supposed to fall off the screen when you kill them, <laughs> which I think is pretty funny. Um, so I'm hoping that's what they, that was the intention, and they just messed up their code and they fall from your gun instead of from the actual location of the thing that you just shot. There we go. Okay, now on this level, oh, there's an extra guy, but how do I get it? Um, I'm above it, okay, and I push down and nothing happens, I can't go down to it, and then, oh, but there's a platform over there. Okay, so here's how you get to the platform. First shoot. Okay, so this platform actually extends quite a ways to the right of the light before you fall down there. Okay, so there's the end of the platform. Jump off the end of the platform, you'll fall down in that light that you saw earlier. And go off the right side and come down here and you can grab it. You can actually walk right through back through the wall. And then exit the level and you're done. This is the one with the hooks. You can't actually see the hooks, but if you'll notice, normally in the game when you... Uh, you come across a hook, it has a little gleamy thing on it there so that you notice it. And you can see the gleamy things in the dark, so you know that there are hooks there. I'm probably better at aiming hooks, aiming at hooks in the dark where I can't actually aim at them than I am at aiming at them in real life, uh, in the regular play. So, it pays in this level to go slow because they can creep up on you, up until a point. Um, and that's where you run into the last one. There he is. <laughs> I ran right into him. Okay, at this point, it, you need to run. And the reason you need to run is because... <laughs> that guy! And um, if you're not running when you run into that guy, there's no way you can be far enough ahead of him to jump over him at the end and, uh, and make it out of the level. And, in fact, I was not far enough ahead of him. Um, occasionally, that just happens anyway, and I've never figured out why. But it always happens if you're moving slowly. So you have to make sure that you're moving at a decent clip. when you run into him. Okay, here it goes again. No, I don't know what I did wrong. Well, so much for all the extra guys I got in here. Um, <laughs> somewhere hiding, you know, in Dugton Apple's back room, is, you know, the map of what this level would have looked like if it hadn't been in the dark. <laughs> okay, now I'm far enough ahead of him, I should be able to survive. Let's get to the end of the level, jump over him, there we are. 